Hello again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 16th of February, 2019. The article was published on the 14th of February by the Associated Press. Title, Fentanyl Deaths from Mexican Oxy Pills Hit Arizona Hard. It isn't just Arizona. Aaron Francisco Chavez swallowed at least one of the sky blue pills at a Halloween party before falling asleep forever. He became yet another victim by a flood of illicit fentanyl smuggled from Mexico into the southwest, a profitable new business for drug gangs that has pushed the synthetic opioid to the top spot for fatal U.S. overdoses. Three others at the party in Tucson also took the pill nicknamed Mexican Oxy, and police flagged down the partygoers saved them by administrating naloxone overdose reversal medication. But the treatment came too late for Chavez, who died at age 19. The fourth thought they were taking oxycodone, a much less powerful opioid, investigators believe. The death of Chavez and many other officials said illustrate how Arizona and other southwest states bordering Mexico have become a hot spot in the nation's fentanyl crisis. Fentanyl deaths tripled in Arizona alone from 2015 through 2017. I'll bet you it's more than tripled again through 2018. It's the worst I've seen in 30 years, this toll that it takes on families, said Doug Coleman, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration special agent in charge of Arizona. The crack cocaine crisis was not as bad. With plenty of pills and powder sold locally out of the arriving fentanyl shipments that are also distributed around the U.S., the drug that has surpassed heroin for overdose deaths has touched all Arizona demographic groups. Chavez's family says he was working at a restaurant as a prep cook with dreams of becoming a chef and trying to turn his life around after serving prison time for a robbery conviction. Also killed in a state over the last year by the pill that goes for 9 to $30 each were a 17-year-old star high school foot baseball pitcher from a Phoenix suburb and a pair of 19-year-old best friends and prominent former high school athletes from the mountain town of Prescott Valley. The parents of one, Gunnar Bunderick, said their son death left a hole in their hearts. Popping the pill at parties, it's a lot more widespread than we know, said Yapana County Sheriff Lieutenant Nate Aversheim. There's less stigma to taking a pill than putting a needle in your arm. But one of these pills can have enough fentanyl for three people. Stamp with an M on one side and 30 on the other to make them look like legitimate oxycodone. The pill started showing up in Arizona in recent years as the Sinaloa cartel's newest drug product, said Tucson Police Lieutenant Christian Wildblood. The fentanyl that killed Chavez was among 1,000 pills sneaked across the border crossing last year in Nogales. Arizona by a woman who was paid $200 to tote them and gave two to Shabbats at the party. According to two documents, it is unknown if he took one or both. At the same crossing last month, U.S. officials announced the biggest fentanyl bust ever, nearly 254 pounds seized from a truckload of cucumbers, enough to potentially kill millions. Valued at 3.5 million, most of it in powder form, and over two pounds, one kilogram was made up of pills. The tablets, in most cases, are manufactured in primitive conditions with pill presses purchased online, and the amounts of fentanyl in each pill can vary widely, Wildblood said. There is no quality control. You know what's interesting is that all of these busts didn't happen through the desert. They happened at legal border crossings. What does that tell you? The wall is going to do squat to stop this kind of activity. Squat. They're not going to bring 10 pills across the desert. They bring truckloads through points of entry, which is why they need to be shut down. There's no reason people are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
They're bringing in drugs and they're taking back money. Most fentanyl smuggled from Mexico is about 10% pure and enters hidden in vehicles at official border crossings around Nogales and San Diego, Customs and Border Protection data show. A decrease in number of smaller shipments with a purity of up to 90% still enter the U.S. in packages sent from China. Although 85% of the fentanyl from Mexico was seized in San Diego area border crossings, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration 2018 National Drug Threat Assessment says seizures have surged at Arizona's border and elsewhere around the state. Folks, this proves that the wall is nothing more than a distraction to divert, to deceive. Total bullshit. The Sonola cartel's ability to ramp up its own production of fentanyl and label oxycotton shows the group's business acumen and why it remains among the world's top criminal organizations. Despite the conviction in New York this week of cartel kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, didn't I say the same thing? I said the vacuum's already been filled. It's not going to stop. Shut down the borders, Donald. That's what has to happen. Shut down the borders. Forget the wall. Post our military along the border, Donald. It's just totally insane. You want to read the rest of the article? It's uh, most interesting. But again, like I said, the wall, distract, divert, and deceive. That's all it is. You want to stop the drugs coming in? Shut down the legal points of entry. Open it two days a week. There is no reason for all this activity back and forth. None. That's sort of what I think. Tell me where I'm wrong. You damn well can't, can you?